Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're talking all things renovation, finally. We're gonna talk from the beginning to the end, everything I did, buying my place, renovating it. If you're new here, my name is Allegra Shaw. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Follow me on Instagram, at Allegra Shaw. TikTok, at Allegra Shaw. Pinterest, it's all at Allegra Shaw. I make beauty, fashion, and lifestyle videos. This happens to be a lifestyle video. And if you didn't know, in 2020, in the middle of the pandemic, I got kicked out of my rental unit and I bought a condo, which was a really huge accomplishment for me. I'm very proud of myself. I ended up renovating it. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. One of the number one questions when I bought my condo was how could you afford this? And that's a really fair question. Toronto is hella expensive, but I did buy at a really great time, no bidding wars, but housing in Toronto is insanely expensive. It's super unaffordable. I am absolutely not a financial advisor. I am not a financial planner. I have absolutely no criteria, education in this matter. This is not advice. Always speak to a professional about your finances. You shouldn't take financial advice from me on the internet. And in fact, you legally, I legally cannot give you advice. This video is sponsored by BMO. We're gonna talk through how some of the BMO products helped me save what I did to get enough money for a down and how I renovated and how I budgeted. I also wanna note that I am based in Canada. A lot of the rules for buying houses, a lot of the products, um, offered in Canada are very different from other countries. So just keep that in mind if you're watching from another country other than Canada. And also things vary province to province even. So just keep that in mind, I'm, on, I'm in Ontario. The savings part of this, we have to go back like 10 years because as soon as I was able to open an RRSP, I did. And an RRSP is a registered retirement savings plan. And I opened one, I think at 18, I opened one and I have had a job since I was 14. So every, a portion of my paycheck was always going into my RRSP. That, that happened from the time that I opened it. I've been saving for a long time for retirement, but what you can do is you can also use your RRSP for the purchase of your first home. So I kind of knew either way, like I was either gonna use it for the purchase of my first home or it was gonna help me retire. I kind of always knew I was gonna be in a career path that I wouldn't receive any sort of pension. So um, I started my RRSP right away. Again, not an experienced invest investor or financial anything, um, but I did want the money in my RRSP to grow. So I did look at a few products, mutual funds, GICs, or active management products, which just require someone to manage them. So there was always something kind of like helping my money grow in my RRSP. And so I have been saving for a long time, but after a consultation with a BMO financial planner, I decided that BMO sustainable portfolios were the best option for me. As an entrepreneur and the owner of a sustainable clothing brand, Uncle Studios, making sure that my investments were in companies that aligned to my personal values and company values was really important to me. BMO sustainable portfolios invest in companies committed to positive environmental, social, uh, and government governance outcomes. Uh, so it just really aligned with my values and how I wanted to invest my money. So just like my RRSPs, uh, my financial advisor helped me set up, set up a continuous savings plan. So each month, a certain amount of money um, comes out of my account and goes into my investments, which just makes it really easy. I don't have to think about it. And if you've budgeted properly, you know exactly how much you can take out and put into those investments and you don't even have to think about it, which I love because I don't want to think about anything else. For a limited time, BMO has an offer where you can get a $50 bonus when you set up a continuous savings plan of $50 per week. We're all about free money. We're all about making our money work for us. So this is a pretty easy and affordable way for us to do that. And if you're able to invest a larger amount, you can get even more. You can also get up to $3,500 if you move your RRSP or TFSA over to BMO mutual funds from another bank or financial institution. It's definitely worth checking out. You can find the details on these offers and many more in the links in the down bar. So I was able to use the proceeds from my BMO Sustainable Portfolios, which was held in my RRSP with the home buyer's plan for the down payment of my condo. And that obviously really helped because the down payment is such a huge expense. And so you wanna be doing everything you can leading up to buying a home uh, to save as much money as you can and make interest on your money and make that money work for you. I just opened up a TFSA and I'll be doing my monthly contributions into my BMO Sustainable Portfolios through my, in my TFSA, just to continue my savings and investing journey. You know, you never know when there might be another big expense that might hit. Uh, the car these days, guys, she's not doing well, but also just retiring and, you know, planning for the future. I always like to just replenish that nest egg that I lost 
uh, in the big purchase. So I always like to have a good nest egg and this really helps. Okay, so now for the renovation budget. Now we've, now we've talked about the actual buying of the home. As I said, I got my home during a really great time. So once I got in here, I didn't like it. And I originally was gonna do two parts of a renovation. So one part first, next part after. Um, but I didn't wanna be in renos twice. So I just decided, I looked at my finances and I decided that I could do it all at once and it would actually just make more sense because I wouldn't have to move my furniture in and out, etc. Budgeting for a renovation is honestly a, way more difficult than I thought. I had no idea what I was doing going into this. I was really lucky obviously because Jonathan had oh, had renovated restaurants and had kind of done this before and he had done a renovation in his place. So I had a little bit of advice and someone to kind of hold my hand, but you know, it is difficult. Pretty much you need to look at what the overall budget of your renovation is gonna be. So whether that's 5,000, 10,000, $20,000, whatever, you have your full renovation budget. And you need to look at, is that just for work done? Like, or is that for furniture as well? So in my case, it was just for the work. I already had some furniture and my furniture budget was separate because I knew I was gonna spend a lot of time getting furniture. So this was just the work. And then if you're new to renovating, what I would do is I would go look at how much things cost because I was naive and thought everything was cheap, but no, everything is really expensive. You should look at how much things cost um, to get an idea of where you want to spend your money and where you want to save your money. You can go super, super high end. You can go super, super low end. Like there's just a huge discrepancy between the two sides. So I feel like there's places where you really want to splurge and then there's places that you don't. So I pretty much just budgeted, you know, what was the big, gonna be the biggest cost? Well, the kitchen was gonna be the biggest cost for me. And then I really wanted to save money in other ways. So floors and kitchens were my biggest costs. And then um, I had the rest of the budget left over for the bathrooms, the front room and anything like that. Then within that like sectioned off budget, I then sectioned it off even more to actual individual items. So that's how I did it. That's just kind of how I recommend budgeting. That's, I feel like the only advice I can really give you is like, look at how much things cost, budget out your, take your whole budget and then section it off into like the rooms or things that you're doing and then break it down even more and have a full Excel spreadsheet ready to go. Cause you're gonna need it. If you can get kind of lost in the noise and you can end up just going over budget like crazy. I'm gonna walk you through each room and what I did. Very front room was a, is my den. If you can believe that, it's my den. This is technically a one plus den, but this den is a cave. It's a closet. It's insane that they consider that a den. It was just this random room before and I knew I wanted to do all cabinets, closet. I knew I needed the storage. Um, custom cabin cabinetry is really expensive and um, I'm super not down for that because Ikea is amazing. So what I did was my contractor and I, and Jonathan, he needs some credit in here too. All of these cabinets are actually Ikea cabinets that are in my front room. And I just got custom mirrors put on the front from this like pretty cheap mirror place. And so I was able to customize Ikea for the front room because one, I think Ikea cabinets are great and they're cheap. And it was a great way to save money. And my contractor really worked with me on making the Ikea work for the space, which was amazing. I'm really happy with how those turned out. The handles on the doors are from Amazon. All of the handles in my place are from Amazon. All of the door handles, all of my faucets are from Amazon. All of my, um, any pull from Amazon, I'm not spending money on that. I'm also not spending money on faucets. like. For me, that's not worth it. I would rather, and I love my faucets and I think they were like, I think my kitchen faucet was under a hundred dollars. And if you've renovated or you know, faucets can go up to thousands of dollars, which is crazy. That's just not something I want to spend money on. So that was something that I saved money on. Going into the bathroom, I did want something really pretty on the floor. And this definitely was like pricey, the floor because Everyone was asking me like, what tiles are those? Those are, mar those are marble and I cut them into diamonds. And, you know, that was definitely pricey, but for me, like I was down to spend money on that because I think it added to the, the whole room. The sink, I saved money on because 
I got it on Wayfair and it was like an assembled sink that I just put in. And then the paint on the walls can be very pricey. It is like a lime wash kind of paint, but my contractor and Jonathan they rolled up their sleeves and they put it on the walls themselves, which saved a lot of costs and labor. So there's little ways to kind of cut costs. For the kitchen, which is obviously the biggest expense, especially because I needed new appliances, we negotiated the hell out of those appliances and honestly, Bad Boy gave us a great deal on them, but I did wait a year and a half for them. So I don't know, it's a toss up there. With the kitchen, you can spend so much money on a countertop. There's so many color options. And I think what I did wrong here was I had picked my cabinets before I had picked my countertops, which left me with very limited options for my countertops and all of the options were very expensive. So I think if I were to go back in time, I would pick my countertops first and then I would do my cabinets because I think there's more options in cabinets at more affordable price points. The cabinets though, I got from a brand called My Kitch and I think they're still called that. I'll link them down below, but my whole kitchen is Ikea and then they're custom fronts for the cabinets. So custom doors, whatever. So I did this like deco in bluey green, I guess it's more blue. And my main inspiration was the I swoon M again set kitchen. Like I just fell in love with that kitchen. I love it so much. And her kitchen work on the island is really expensive. So I felt like this gave me the same uh, vibe without obviously having to spend the money on doing like fluted things or whatever. Now to my, t my stone, my kitchen is marble. Marble is very expensive and I'm, everyone will talk you out of doing marble in your kitchen. Everyone will tell you it's a bad idea. To each their own, okay? I love the look of marble. I just, I'm obsessed with it. I, you know, there's other, there's other stones, porcelain, quartz that people will probably try to talk you into. And I just like, it will just never look like marble. Marble is so, so beautiful. Marble is very porous. So if you drop something on it, if you spill red wine and it's a kitchen, right? Like that's gonna happen. It can and will stain. And that's what people get worried about. But what I did was I got this like custom plastic wrapping. So I can be more aggressive with my marble and it doesn't stain. Um, that was a price. That was an expensive thing to do. But for me, I knew that I am so clumsy that like I needed that. So I budgeted that in because I knew I wanted marble and this custom wrapping was a really great way to protect the marble. That said, I love the look of weathered marble too. So, you know, whatever. But I wasn't sure how long I was gonna be here. So to have the option to sell a kitchen with a perfect condition marble is also really great. So I got my marble from Stone Tile. They were really great. They're really easy to work with. If you are in Toronto or the Ontario area, Stone Tile is absolutely incredible. And they, this is the Calcutta Monet. Is it the Monet or is it their Violetta? I can't remember. I'm gonna put it on screen. I looked at 500 million marbles slabs like i haven't i don't know and then you what you do is you get your stone fabricated and again fabricators can range in prices so these are all like little costs that you need to think about but if you have like a general contractor they'll they'll probably have people but um i did everything kind of like a la carte so some ways in the kitchen that i save money again the pulls are from amazon that was a really easy cheap expense my hood fan, I just bought a really cheap hood fan and then my contractor made a box over it um, out of MDF. And then my pantry, my contractor also just made with MDF and drywall. And I, it's exactly what I envisioned. It's exactly what I wanted, but I really worked closely with him and he is honestly a superstar and I love him. I didn't talk about the floors yet. So the floors were a massive expense. That was definitely the biggest chunk and I knew that was gonna be the case. I did a custom plank lightwood herringbone. And the reason why I did a custom size of plank is because I was looking around forever and it was really, I, it was actually impossible to find a like skinnier wit plank. Every herringbone now is like super thick planks and I just like did, I hated it. And I wanted mine to look very uh, European, very Parisian. Um, so I did a custom plank and that obviously added to the cost as well as it took a long time obviously because it was custom made but i have to give one piece of advice you have to find good flooring people like 
get recommendations. My, the guys who did my floor are so good. Like it is the best floor I have ever seen. It is perfectly smooth. It is perfectly level. It is so, there are no spaces in between the herringbone. Like it's just solid as fuck. like it's amazing. And that's a recommendation for you is to really get a good person to do your floors. You might pay a little more, but in the end it is worth it because I feel like the floors really show you how good of a quality a renovation is. So that was a huge chunk of my budget, but it was worth it. But what I did do to save money is I didn't do a custom herringbone upstairs. I did a cheaper vinyl upstairs. So that was pretty much it for the main floor. And then for the upstairs, didn't do too much. I did redo the floors and I just got a vinyl plank and I did a vinyl plank because I wanted to bring the floors into the bathroom and obviously you can't like have wood in the bathroom or it's gonna just get destroyed. So um, this vinyl was, is it vinyl? Yeah, it was vinyl. I think it's vinyl. I brought it into the bathroom. So all the floors on the top floor are the same. For my closets, I did California closets. I had gotten three quotes from three different companies, Container Store, California Closets, and Simply Closets. Container Store was so expensive, dude. Like it was insane. I was actually almost threw up on the call. Like you're charging this much for a closet like this. And my closet is tiny. It was crazy. So as soon as I got the quote from them, I was like, see you later container store. And then my next quote I got from Simply Closets and it was actually a really good price, but it didn't have all the features that I wanted. So it was more like a, just a basic kind of custom closet. And then we landed on California Closets and they did an amazing job. It was pretty, it's very custom. And it was a lot cheaper than Container Store. And I'm very, very happy with the product. Everyone who works there was so nice. It was so seamless. It was so simple and I loved it. So that was my closet. And then in the bathroom, I did save a ton of money here. So for the shower tiles, again, you can go so wild with tiles and spend so much money, but I did these white tiles and they didn't end up being that much money. And I just made them vertical and they kind of have some texture to them beautiful, love them. And then on the floors, I just did like classic hexagon tiles. Honestly, if I could go back in time, I would redo this bathroom differently, but I was trying to, I really wanted to save money on this bathroom. The vanity itself is a, an Ikea vanity. And then I got my kitsch to do the wood fronts, but I do think also Ikea has that kind of dark wood in stock now, like that's part of their line so you could look into that but i wanted like a dark wood vanity and then this stone chipolato undelato i think that's what it's called i found this in the garbage pause for round of applause here i found it in the garbage well it wasn't the garbage but i was at a stone store and it was like winter and i was outside and this stone was like in the back this is a marble in the back it had been destroyed there was a few different slabs of it but it would have been like weathered and had been there for, I don't know, like a couple of years, maybe like three, four years, five years. I got an amazing price on it because it wasn't well taken care of. It was kind of just like, I guess someone had bought it and then never picked it up or they didn't need that many slabs, something like that. And so I got this for a price that you wouldn't even believe. I used that stone for my vanity and then I also did my shower curb in that. My mistakes in here, I decided to do a half shower door that I got from Wayfair, but I decided to do a half shower door because I'm dumb. The water really does splash out of the shower and my drywall is now ruined. And so I would, should have just done a completely closed in shower door. Like that's not a time to do aesthetics over functionality because water can really f everything. So if I could go back in time, I would do a full door and I'm probably gonna end up replacing it with a full door because yeah because that just the sconces i picked in my bathroom are my favorite i'm just gonna replace them with so i had i wanted to make sure i got ample of storage in this bathroom i did a mirror like medicine cabinet i found this one at pottery barn and it was pretty but also had the storage which i really liked um again my faucets are from amazon saved money that way saved money on the ikea vanity saved money on the my kitsch things to make it prettier um and so that bathroom was a really great deal for how much work because i didn't go over the top with the um, supplies. I didn't do anything in my bedroom really. So that's pretty much my entire renovation. Obviously minus furniture, which we can do a whole other video on. When I was looking at the renovation of this place, I really wanted to make sure that my renovation fit the vibe of the place. 
this place is super bright, it's super airy, it's really pretty. And so this was my time to do like a really light and airy renovation. I think just make sure that you're looking at the bones of the place that you're in and renovate accordingly. Another thing a lot of people had concerns about was my kitchen and why things were placed the way that they're placed. My kitchen um, goes stove, sink, dishwasher. And the reason it's like that's because that's how it was set up. I wasn't trying to move around plumbing. It's You can't even really move around plumbing um, in condos because everything's concrete. So it's just kind of a nightmare. So I just kept it kind of like as it was already set up. Do I love that the dishwasher is right beside the sink? No, I hate it because every time I open the dishwasher, I can't access the garbage or the sink. Like that's really annoying to me, but it is what it is. You know, there's just some things when you're renovating, you have to take an L on. A lot of people didn't like that my sink was beside my stove. Again, it just is what it is. There was no other way to set it up. If you have any questions about the renovation that I skipped over, please leave them down below. I will do a part two and we can also talk about the furniture and designing. Thank you so much to BMO for sponsoring this video. Thank you for helping me buy my place, budget, all that good stuff. Everything you wanna know about everything will be linked in the down bar. Love you all, peace and love. Remember to follow me on Instagram if you haven't already. Bye.